Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest decisions in Scream. No, it's just what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. For this list, we're looking at choices made by characters in this horror franchise that are ill advised and have serious consequences. If you haven't seen the first four movies, here is your spoiler alert. What's your favorite scary movie? Scream about it in the comments. Number 10. Trying to escape through the cat door. Scream. Hit him. It's okay. You know what they say about dumb blondes? Yeah, now apply that to a horror movie character. While Tatum is probably smarter than she lets on, her wits aren't really about her when Ghostface corners her in the garage. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? She starts the interaction in a dumb way to begin with, thinking Ghostface is Randy playing a prank, even though some classmates of hers have already been murdered. Once realizing the danger, Tatum actually proves rather resourceful, using a freezer door and some beer bottles to incapacitate Ghostface. But instead of doubling down the punishment, she tries to escape through what's probably technically a doggy door and gets stuck. Now all Ghostface has to do is press one button to send Tatum to her doom. <laughs> Number 9. Being Bad Cops Scream 4. The cops guard in the house. They always get it. What are you talking about? It's a movie cop rule. It sucks to be a cop in a movie, unless you're Bruce Willis. Cops in horror movies are almost universally stupid, but Anthony Perkins and Ross Haas, yes, those are their names, take it to a new level. It's Olivia Morris. She lives next door. She's on the list. Yeah. She can live next door to me. Between doing crossword puzzles and ogling high school girls, they're already not cut out for security detail. They prove this when they get lost pursuing Ghostface, apparently for several minutes, allowing him to kill Olivia. What the hell happened? Okay, I saw him go into that yard two houses down right before. And I circled around to cut him off. And? And I met Haas coming from the other direction. Yeah, no, he must have circled back around somehow. He's like a ghost. Somehow getting assigned to the same detail the next night, Perkins makes the idiotic decision to play a prank on Haas when the latter returns from a perimeter check, giving Ghostface the perfect opportunity to ice the two. Now this is why cops always die in movies. No! <laughs> Damn it. You should have seen the look on your face, rookie. Number 8. Leaving Derek Strung Up. Scream 2. Isn't that a big Brat faux pas. Oh yeah, that is a big no-no. See, you're not supposed to give your Greek letters to your girl. No shape, way, or form. The brothers are gonna kick his ass, but it's tradition. It's tradition. When Sydney's boyfriend Derek decides to give her his Greek letters, he adds a target on his back from his fraternity brothers. You know, in addition to the ghost face one. After seeing Sydney taken to safety by police officers, mostly smart ones for a change, Derek is promptly kidnapped and taken to a hazing party. Oh, Using a prop used by the theater department, the brothers string him up and take to pouring beer down his shorts. The trouble is, after leaving and pretty much cleaning up what must have been the shortest party ever, they leave Derek there. Though this is believable frat bro behavior, there is still a killer on the loose, and they virtually get Derek killed as he's unable to defend himself. You are dead! Number 7. Getting Wasted. Scream 4. Who's ready to drink every time someone screams the word? Yes! Well, let's get Woo! this stuff! Speaking of ill-timed parties, we don't see why anyone in the Scream universe would think of throwing one, and yet they always do. Heck, even ghost-face killers like Stu and Roman have been seen imbibing knowing full well they'll be masking up soon. Still, the worst offender has to be Robbie from Scream 4, who, though less naive than his friends, still allows himself to get hammered at two different gatherings. My life is over. 
Worse yet, he decides to wander around the house alone. We guess to appeal to his live web stream? Yeah, what's the deal with that thing anyway? Okay, I'm a little drunk, so don't blame me on that connection. <laughs> Whatever the case, he drunkenly fiddles with his headset long enough to give Ghostface an easy kill. That's better. <laughs> Number six, trusting their partners. Scream two and scream four. If you're evil enough to deceive your friends and kill them one by one, you're evil enough to betray your partner. Mickey was the first to learn this the hard way as Mrs. Loomis shoots him as soon as he's of no more use. Wait to the trial. It is gonna rock! Oh, Mickey, there's not gonna be a trial. <gasps> Though he survives this round of bullets, we bet he's still learned not to trust people he meets on psycho websites. In Scream 4, Charlie similarly places way too much faith in Jill. Though she's probably been sleeping with him to manipulate him, he still trusts she's gonna shoulder him in their efforts to make them look like victims. <laughs> the way we rehearsed it. Speaking of which, who's to say Billy didn't intentionally cut too deep with Stu in the first movie? Stop it, Billy, would you, alright? I can't take any more. I'm feeling woozy here! Yeah. Number 5. Not Unmasking Ghostface, Scream 2 and Scream 3. As scary as Ghostface can be, his kill count goes down significantly once the various killers unmask themselves. Following that logic, you'd think protagonists would be more eager to do it themselves when given the chance. Don't see it. Don't see it. <laughs> In Scream 2, Sydney has the opportunity to unmask an unconscious Ghostface after a car wreck, but initially decides to flee with her roommate Hallie. She regains her senses and tries to go back, but soon discovers Ghostface has come to and crept around to kill Hallie. Oh shit. What? He's gone. What? <laughs> In the next one, Gale too has a similar opportunity, but chickens out before he wakes up. Come on. He's now cold at the bottom of the stairs. You know the only character to successfully unmask Ghostface? The very first protagonist, Casey. Though she's pretty much already dead. <laughs> Number 4. Letting Teens Party Scream Though the cops from Scream 4 are pretty terrible, we often forget how negligent Dewey is in the first movie. You stay close to Sydney. Don't let her out of your sight. Yes, sir. Despite the fact that the police department has issued a citywide curfew, Dewey personally escorts Sydney and his sister Tatum to Stu's party. And we all know how that goes. All right, you girls have fun. Not too much fun or I'll bust you. Though he's probably more concerned with impressing Gale, he proceeds to let all the vulnerable underage youths drink the night away. You're underage, son. I'm kidding. <laughs> Have a good time. Watch the driving. Worse yet, Dewey eventually abandons the party to investigate the report of a suspicious abandoned car with Gale. I thought maybe we'd walk. It's such a nice night out. Got a flashlight. You're not scared, are you? As much as we love Dewey, based on his actions here, he probably deserved to have that knife plunged in his back. Number three, not killing Randy. Scream. Oh, there he is. I told you. I told you he's right around the corner. We all know about the countless times Ghostface killers have either failed or neglected to kill Sydney when they had the chance, but this is downright inexcusable. After all the nameless teens ditch the party to morbidly gawk at their dead principal, Randy, played by Jamie Kennedy, is left to finish watching Jamie Lee Curtis's Halloween alone. Behind you. Behind Jamie. Jamie Turner. Oh, God. <laughs> Too drunk to defend himself, <laughs> that whole thing, Randy should be easy pickings for Ghostface. Instead, Ghostface hears Sydney shrieking outside and attends to her when he could have easily made a quick cut anyway. Heck, even Billy largely misses later on what should have been an easily fatal point blank shot. Thank goodness for those rules. Oh my god, Randy, I thought you were dead. I probably should be. I never thought I'd be so happy to be a virgin. 
Number 2. Accidentally Revealing Herself Scream 4 Jill, 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 you arguably came the closest to getting away with it all. You framed your ex-boyfriend, killed your partner, put Sydney down for the count, and staged the scene in a horrific display of self-mutilation. Though Jill's biggest mistake was assuming two stabs to Sydney's gut would do it, this particular mistake is rookie stuff. Is, is your wife... She's gonna be fine. She's recovering. If I ever write a book one day, I'd, I'd want her to write it with me. We'd be a good team with our matching wounds and all. While recovering in the hospital, Jill references Gail's stab wound to Dewey. Though Dewey initially thinks nothing of it, it's Gail who puts two and two together. Why, she was stabbed in the shoulder? How did she know I was too? Damn it! This, of course, sets Dewey and Gail in motion to rescue Sydney, whom Jill already had in a vulnerable position. And naturally, if you give people enough time, they will ultimately put you in your place. Can I just have one final word? What? Please? No. Clear. Clear? Clear. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Putting an ear against the stall. Scream 2. Phil listens in on his bathroom neighbor and gets quite a surprise. Listen, mommy. Listen, mommy. <coughs> Stalking in broad daylight. Scream. Ghostface doesn't even plan on attacking, yet is still compelled to enter a supermarket. How many guys will put up with a girlfriend who's sexually anorexic? Billy and his penis don't deserve you, right? Backing up to the van, Scream 2. You are much safer in the wide open field, Randy. You wanna be one of the big boys? Huh? Manson? Bundy? OJ? Son of a <laughs> Hiding from security, Scream 3. Fearing Ghostface, Sarah inadvertently hides from the guard who could have saved her. Putting her back against the mail slot, Scream 4. Kate helps Sydney shut the door, but Ghostface has a special delivery. Raise it from the bottom! Can you? Let's get out of here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Going Back in the House – Scream 3 There are no characters in Scream dumber than Tom Prince. Sure, Derek does something similar in Scream 2, but he at least thought he was being heroic and lives. Why would anyone go back in that house anyway? Tom, on the other hand, does this out of fear and promptly dies. At a rap party of sorts for the now-canceled Stab 3, Gail, Dewey, and the actors start getting threatening faxes from Ghostface. Keep in mind, this movie came out in the year 2000. Who will survive? Is it Jennifer, Tom, Angelina, Dewey, Gail, the killer will give mercy to? <laughs> like sane people, the group migrates to the backyard. But Tom's just gotta know what the end of the message says. I'm going back to man! He uses a lighter to read in the dark, only to realize the place is rigged to blow. Honestly, they probably all should have smelled the gas, right? Whoever smells the Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.